In this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the render queue. This is a great way to set up multiple projects to render, and it also works with takes, which makes it even more convenient. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about the render queue. Love it for setting up multiple projects to render without having to babysit. And it's really this window here we're going to be talking about, but let's see how we can get there. Uh, there's two ways you can open up the render queue or add an open project to the render queue. And that is from the render menu here, you can choose either add or open the window. So if I choose add, it will do just that. And if I have any unsaved changes, it will ask if I want to save my project first. I would generally recommend hitting yes, unless you have a very good reason to hit no. The other way you can do that is from our middle render icon here. You can see it kind of changed to our render queue. Uh, the other option would be to choose add to render queue if you want to add your project like that. The third way you can add a project is to just come here to the open icon, browse to a Cinema 4D file directly, and choose it from there. Uh, I guess there is technically a fourth way because you can also um, add the current project. So that's how you can add projects to the render queue. These other icons are pretty straightforward. If you want to render the project, delete it, edit, uh, or set up team render to use multiple machines if you have multiple computers and the licenses to do so. The files listed here are pretty straightforward in that you can choose whether or not you want them to render. Maybe you want to render one first. Um, you can also change the order manually. Uh, and you can see some other information about their status, whether they've rendered or aired out, if they're using a take, which I'll talk more about, as well as the camera and render settings, which if you are using takes are probably going to be set up and taken care of in there. Now, beneath um, this list here, you have some of that information and the ability to change it. So you can switch takes, um, which is really useful. And if you have multiple takes, you don't have to add, open, or anything like that. All you have to do is hold control and drag down. And that way I could then select that duplicated one and choose my other take. And if I had multiple render settings, I could set that up, multiple cameras as well. But once again, if I'm using a take, it's probably all set up there. And with a bit of luck, um, the output file's already been set up too, but if it doesn't look right or you want to make a change, um, you can do that here. It does create a log file, which um, in the grand scheme of things, I don't really use too much. I don't need to read through it as a, if something goes wrong, I can usually figure out exactly what it is without it, but there it is and that's where it will save to. So that's pretty much it for working with this, setting up um, multiple projects to render, changing the take, um, yeah, we can do it all in here. Now, if you want to see kind of how to set something like this up from scratch, I have a, another project I can do that in. Um, so why don't we actually just move this up a, a little bit so we can see it. So I have these two different planes with the displacer deformer. And let's say I wanted to render out each of these separately for whatever reason, maybe it's for compositing purposes, who knows? The first thing I'm gonna do is actually go into my render settings because when it comes to rendering with takes or, or even really using the render queue, I prefer to use a token for the file name as opposed to something um, just like beauty, which doesn't have a lot of information. And if I have multiple cameras or multiple takes, I don't wanna have to come in here and change the file name each time. And so um, rather than have to change it in the render queue, I would rather just change it in here and not have to worry about it. Now, what we can do are use tokens, which are kind of parts of a file name we can add. And some of these are a little bit more useful than others, like the computer name. I suppose that could be helpful, but what camera we're rendering out of is. So if I add this, you can see my file name will now be beauty underscore um, whatever camera uh, we're looking through. And so obviously we would want to name this. So it's like cam one. So that would, that would be our file name now, beauty underscore cam one. Another option, and you could, you can add multiple takes together if you need that much um, separation in your file names would be to use what take you're on. And it will do the same thing, add that, the take name. Now I haven't set up any takes yet, um, but that is what I would do either kind of at the end of beauty or instead of beauty altogether, I might just use that token. 
and you can use whatever format, whatever, but the file name is the big thing. Different render settings as well. If you were gonna use those in takes or in the render queue, would definitely make sense to name these because you can duplicate these as well by holding control and dragging down. And so I can't tell if these are for different cameras or what the difference is here. And that's why naming them is important. Uh, when it comes to the takes, they're pretty straightforward. Um, you know, if you haven't used them before, I would recommend watching a longer video about these because I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly, but these allow us to make different changes or have different versions of our project all in one. Now, I don't recommend um, using the main take, even though I did previously, uh, as the main take I typically like to use to make changes or adjustments to my file. Um, and if you were actually using this take, it can cause issues with the other ones. So my recommendation would be to use a child take. So I'll use two of those. And this is pretty much like any other time we make a child where um, our child takes will, will look the same as the main unless we tell them differently, unless we do something differently in here, whether that's change a material, a light, hide and show different objects, you name it. Now inside a take, you can tell whether it renders, what camera to use, or what render settings to use. And it can either inherit from parent or use its own. And so what we'll do is just call this blue, call this green. And to make changes to takes, um, there are really two ways to do it. You can manually come here, choose um, a property and hit override. And that would then allow you to change that property now. I don't know why it would be this one, it really wouldn't, but if it was gonna be a camera animation or an object animation, that type of thing, um, this would be one way to do it where you would have to override each property manually. The other way is just to turn on auto take. And now Cinema 4D is gonna look at all these different properties and if you change them, it will actually remember that change from take to take. And this can be pretty much anything in here that, has, that you could animate, you can set up a take for. So in my objects here, we are in our blue take. So what I would want to do is hide the green one. Okay, it would help if I had named these. But now we can see in our blue, blue take, all we see is the blue plane. I will switch to the green plane. Make sure I have that one active and do the same thing. So hide the, actually green, so hide the blue. So we only see that one. And there we go. I can turn off auto take. And if I switch between these, that's what we see. And if you come in here, you can actually see what it's remembered for each take, what it thinks the differences are. And it's just the basic properties, those stoplights. It could, like I said earlier, though, it could be anything from materials to animations to um, anything else. Okay. But that's kind of the basics of working with takes. And then like we did before, I would add, um, make sure both are set up to render. Uh, and then I can add to render queue. And there's that pop-up asking me to save, which I absolutely would in this case, because I added these takes. Um, so my new file will have them, whereas my old one wouldn't. We can see that RQ3 file has been added. I can choose what take I want, duplicate it, and then choose the next one, and then choose different cameras, render settings as well. But like I said, I would probably do that all in my takes. But, that will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, could you do me a favor, like it as well as subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.